We will call the 13th regular meeting of the Common Council to order. Pat, would you call the roll, please? Balvin? Here. D. Berg? Here. E. Berg? Here. Doyle? Here. Manny? Here. Moody? Here. Perez? Here. Ports? Here. Schultz? Here. Stephan? Here. D. Van Akron? Here. T. Van Akron? Here. Vanderweel? Here. Wangaman? Here. Warner? Here. Winninger? Here. 16 present. Corms present. Alderman Van Akron. Your Honor, I would move that we accept the minutes of the previous meeting as entered on the record. Move to second that we accept the minutes of the previous meeting under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Pledge of Allegiance this evening, we have Troop 818 out of IC and Dan McKenzie is the Scoutmaster. Dan, your troop, would you lead us in a pledge, please? Okay, Pat, with that, we have the swear swearing in of our first district alder person. Yes, Richard Manning, I'm front and center, please. <laughs> Hi, Pat Lizzie. Hi, Richard Manning. Swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. Swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Wisconsin. Constitution of the State of Wisconsin. And will faithfully and impartially. And will faithfully and impartially. Discharge the duties of the office of older person. Discharge the duties of the office of older person. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Thank Congratulations, Richard. Thank you. Welcome aboard. <laughs> okay, we have two hearings this evening. I'll read them both, and anyone interested or wishing to be heard on any one of the two hearings, please step up to the microphone, give us your name and address. The first one is amend the Sheboygan floodplain zoning ordinance to adopt the data submitted by the Federal Emergency Management Agency. The second hearing is establish the use district classification of annex property located north of Mayflower Avenue, east of North 15th Street. Anyone wishing to be heard on any of the two? Anyone wishing to be heard? Alderman Van Akron. Move that the hearings be closed. Moved and seconded that the hearings be closed under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Opposed? Motion carried. Steve? Confirmation of appointment? I don't have any appointments. Okay. I'm sorry, I forgot to give them to you. Thank you. Uh, this was dated September 16th, it came in at the last meeting. Uh, hereby submit the following appointments for your consideration. Andrew Geeson to be considered for appointment to Commission on Aging to fill the unexpired term of Joseph Meyer, whose term expires 4-30-03. And Steve Dortman to be considered for appointment to the Commission on Aging to fill the unexpired term of Jerry Schneider, whose term expires 4-30-06. Signed by the Mayor. That one can be confirmed? Right we'll hang on a minute. No. Or is there any, okay. Alderman Van Akron. Your Honor, I would move that we confirm your appointments. It's been moved and second to confirm the appointments under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. 
Then under uh, Mayor's new appointments, uh, this is dated today's date, hereby submit the following appointments for your consideration. Richard Manny to be considered for the following appointments to fill the unexpired term of Anthony Bonet, which expires April 21, 2003. Board of Housing Appeals, Public Protection and Safety Committee. Richard Manny to be considered for appointment to the Industrial Development Commission to fill the unexpired term of Jerry Doyle, which expires April 14, 2003. Jerry Doyle to be considered for appointment to the Historic Preservation Commission to fill the unexpired term of Anthony Bonet, which expires April 14, 2003. Signed by the Mayor. Alderman Van Akron. I would need suspension. He's Alderman. They have to be on committees. Your Honor, I would move to suspend the rules. Moved and second for suspension. Is there any discussion? Proceed. Your Honor, I think this is a great time to suspend the rules as Mr. Manning, Alderman Manning, will be representing the people of that district, and the sooner we can get him on board, the better off it will be, and I welcome him to the council. Thank you. On that, I will move that the appointments be approved. Sorry. Moved and second that the appointments be approved. That's for both Alderman Doyle and Alderman Manning. Yes. Okay. That's why I said appointment. <coughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. And, uh, also dated today, I hereby submit the following appointments for your consideration to the Special Committee on Pet Fancier Regulations. And I'm assuming that this is, if that resolution creating this special committee is adopted, uh, Alderman uh, Silas Vanderweel, Alderman uh, Dennis Bauman, Peter Fullerton, Melanie Nick, and Nicole Lenau, signed by the mayor. And the terms would all expire uh, under this as May 31st, 03. And that will lie over. Thank you, Steve. <coughs> Public forum. Public forum. Renee Asusha. Thank you. Um, I'd like to begin by thanking the mayor and the elder people for setting up a, a room tax advisory committee, which I uh, participate in. And one of the things that I would just like to do tonight is make sure that everybody is brought up to speed with some of the things that we've discussed in the meeting. I know that the finance director or finance committee is going to be looking at uh, the way room tax is spent at an upcoming meeting, and I wanted to just make sure that we're all on the same page. In front of you, everybody should find a packet that I put on your desk. Um, the pink page on the front basically uh, shows you the percent of room tax um, that was given to the Convention and Visitors Bureau to promote tourism in Sheboygan. And as you can see, in the first 12 years or so, um, the CVB received approximately 90% of the, the money, which at that point in time was very consistent with what's in the room tax statute. Uh, what concerns the entire lodging industry in Sheboygan is the way uh, the money has been sliding, in particular the last five years. You can see in 1997, only 85% of the money went to the Convention and Visitors Bureau, and this year we're down to approximately 50%. Our concern is that this money is going to continue to slide. And when you look at the next page, you will see um, on the green sheet uh, the Convention and Visitor Bureau's inquiries for the first six months of the year. Uh, you'll see that there has been a 5.3% decrease in inquiries. And if this does not alarm you, it really should, because if the city is thinking about um, developing a convention center, you would want these numbers to be positive, not negative. And by continually decreasing the amount of money going to tours and promotion and development, um, you're going to have a decrease in inquiries, a decrease in people coming to the community, which ultimately could lead to a, a bigger burden on the taxpayers because uh, we are not going to have this influx of people coming up from Chicago to spend their money here to help the restaurants and shops, et cetera. Um, if you look at the white pages, that's actually a copy of the room tax statute. And if you flip to the second white page, which is, I believe, page 47, I just highlighted one sentence in purple, and it reads, any amount of room tax collected that must be spent on tourism promotion and development shall either uh, be spent directly by the municipality on tourism promotion and development or shall be forwarded to the commission. Basically, what I just read, twice they mention that the money needs to be spent on tourism promotion and development. And I think that's the key thing here. The lodging industry is a little bit concerned that 20% of our money is being spent on the 4th of July uh, holiday, the majority of it going to the police overtime and the police regular pay. You know, if you ask yourself the question, and when you look at the spirit in which the statute was written, um, I don't know if 20% of the money being spent on a one-day event would be seen as consistent with what the statute is asking you to spend 
the money on. Um, tourism promotion and development for a one-day festival when there's not even a billboard taken out in Milwaukee. You know, who are you pulling in to advertise for the Fourth of July celebration? You know, trying to pull people in from Howard's Grove and Keele doesn't really count. Those folks are already coming in for the festival. So um, I think you have to think long and hard as to the spirit in which the statute was written. Um, and then the last yellow page just is um, something that I came across when I was reading uh, the Innkeeper magazine. Uh, uh, the Wisconsin Innkeeper magazine and talks about unauthorized room tax use. And basically in closing, I would just ask that you take the following action. First of all, take the time to read the statute. Um, and then uh, look at the intent in which the statute was written and ask yourself if, she if Sheboygan is using the room tax money in the spirit in which it was supposed to be to actually develop and promote tourism or is it being used more as a slush fund? And then um, Ask yourself this question. If you want to develop a convention center, actually, I'd like you all to write down all your reasons why you should not be promoting it. You know, if you're going to build it, that does not necessarily mean they will come. So I'd like you to write down the reasons why we're not promoting the city to the full intent of the statute. And if you'd like to mail them to me, that would be fine, or call me on the phone, because I'm real curious as to why you don't want to promote the city to the full extent. Um, and lastly, as you'll see when you read the statute, um, it does talk about forming a commission, and I'd like to ask all of you to seriously consider forming a commission um, so you don't have to waste your time or my time on this issue anymore. Thank you. Thank you, Renee. Is there anyone else wishing? Oh, yeah. My name is Wu Yang. I live at uh, 1744 Greenfield Avenue for the past 19 years. 21 years. Uh, tonight I am standing here, I remember this is the third time that I'm standing here to talk to you. And um, one thing I just want to bring you back to the history back in 1960 to 1975, the Hmong were involved in the secret uh, army, the war in Laos, which is the Vietnam War, but in Laos. And every Hmong that came in 1975 to now, they are not immigrants, they are refugees. That means they have special status. And they are here forever, it's not for a while. So there's a reason why they are, they are here. And tonight, I, I should, I'm not gonna go through again what we have done for the past year. Uh, I just want to say thank you to all of you, that ladies and gentlemen, to listen to us, to hear what we had to say. And all what we need to do is to bring out the Hmong refugees, the Hmong Americans, to feel comfortable, to increase their comfort level, to be, feel belonging to Sheboygan. In order to make that happen, a couple of things need to be done, is to have something they can feel, they feel like they belong to, and also have the people of Sheboygan to, to acknowledge they are there, they are, part of Sheboygan. So we need something that we need to, to go on. So that memorial is a very good tool for us. And education is part of ongoing that we need the process to, to keep going, not to stop, because generation has a gap. Uh, people that we came here sponsor, all those Hmong family, they are no longer here. They move out or younger generation come up. And that's what we think a memorial or this type that we've been talking about, it is very important for the Hmong entrance. On behalf of the Hmong veterans and widows of veterans behind me, I would like to thank you, the city council, uh, the staff of the planning commissions and uh, public works. Many of you have listened to us. And I must, I must uh, recognize that I've been here 20 years and I don't have Sheboygan night ascent. So, you have to bear with me. My generation is going to be like this. Your, grand, your grandpa or grandpa probably went through the same experience. And I understand it. I am a bridge between my old folks and my younger folks. I am a bridge between. So I like the bridge to be strong. And I cannot be strong without your help. So tonight I'm here. I just want to thank you that tonight I understand that there's going to be uh, the memorial come up, and I would like to think about you, what you're going to do, and help the Hmong veterans. Thank you. Thank you. Hernandez. 
<clears throat> Good evening. On behalf of the Hmong Veterans Memorial Committee, I want to publicly thank the many supporters throughout the Sheboygan community, uh, some of them who are here this evening, uh, for their kind words of encouragement and their active support. I also wish to thank those city council members who I believe will cast their vote in favor of placing the memorial in Deland Park. Your votes will confirm that you understand your constituents and their high regard for the Hmong people and the other rich cultures comprising our city. We're indeed a diverse community and a diverse nation, but we stand united in our resolve to defend freedom and our democratic way of life that values representation and full participation by all. The Hmong Veterans Memorial will surely honor the Hmong soldiers and their compatriots who sacrificed and suffered greatly in our country's defense. It will stand also in testimony of the generous humanitarian spirit, community pride, and courage that exemplifies the people of the great city of Sheboygan. Again, my thanks to the city council members and the city staff who have given of their time to ensure that this project goes forward in a thoughtful, proactive, and positive fashion. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Before we get into the agenda, Terry, I know you're gonna to wanna to pull 1351 and 52 ahead. I would, I would think you want to pull those ahead, but there's two people I would like to recognize before we get there. Uh, we always talk about the excellent city employees we have, and we really have some excellent city employees in the city, and I want to take the time to recognize two of them. Chief Zaire, are you here this evening? Yes. Excellent. One of our firefighters has helped a man in Elkhart Lake, I believe. Chief, you may want to tell us a little bit about that, how he saved his life. I believe uh, firefighter Scott Poth, correct? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Come and call. So yes, that's correct. I think you received a letter uh, forwarded by the mayor from Alan Rudnick, the business person in the city of Sheboygan, who was in Elkhart Lake on the day when uh, a person did take a uh, turn for the worse in the middle of the street. Uh, Alan told me personally that um, it was traumatic for him being a, a citizen just to try and react. Um, and without notice, turned around and saw a person coming up to him. It was firefighter Scott Poth. And he credits uh, Scott for saving this man's life. So. Uh, to get receive a letter like that, there's good days in my job and there's bad days. Uh, example of a bad day is when Hutz and the mayor call me in to hit my budget again. Uh, that's, a bad, that's, a, that's a bad day. But a good day is when you get a letter from uh, uh, any citizen, but especially uh, Alan Rundick, a really respected citizen, saying that thanking our department for the training and the expertise and the response of this gentleman on his day off, I think it's a, uh, I'm proud of him and be having him in my department. I'm sure you're all proud of him being a member of this community and a, and a city employee. And, you know, all city employees probably would have reacted the same way. We're lucky enough to be trained to react. Uh, you know, I know that the police department is trained also, but also all city employees and CPR. Just happens to be Scott was in the right place at the right time to help a man, a man in need at the right time and the right place. And just want to let you know that I forwarded a letter to Mayor for that reason. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. The other employee we have is Marie Ellis. I believe you all have a letter on your, or a copy of the letter on your desk. If you take time to read it. Hey, Janesville, how about putting taxpayers first? I would like to share a message about how Marie Ellis, Sheboygan City Assessor, and her staff feel about taxpayers. Please take the time to read this. A very good article. Marie, excellent job. Congratulations. <laughs> and Chief, thank you. Okay, Terry, did you want to pull those two documents ahead? I guess we do. Um, Your Honor, at this time I would move that we pull ahead 1351 and 1352, both the resolutions authorizing, providing for the sale and issuance of one million six hundred and I'll put my glasses on, eighty-five thousand dollars. The other one is for uh, the sale of an issuance of three million nine hundred forty thousand dollars of general obligation promissory notes and all related details. And I would move that both resolutions be put upon their passage. Moved and second that the resolutions be put upon their passage. Under discussion. Alderman Schultz. Thank you, Your Honor. I see uh, Tom and Carol 
is here. I believe I remember their names, right? right? It's been a while since uh, we visited with them. Uh, they're both here, or maybe they could give us uh, their thoughts on what the future looks like, the you know, markets and the condition that it is today. The interest rates that we have on here look very favorable. Uh, maybe if they could just take a couple of minutes and, and give us what their opinion is of the future, looking at crystal ball. Good point. Please. Yeah, please. So let's move to open the floor to the two guests. Second. Second. We'll just second open the floor under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <clears throat> Motion carried. Please, Carol. Okay, thank you very much. Nice to be back, and I'm impressed. I <laughs> remembered our names. <laughs> okay. Um, Yes, uh, as a result of today's uh, bidding in the marketplace, uh, first of all, we are financing projects for the city's capital improvements program. And we have uh, two issues. One is a taxable issue, one is a tax exempt issue. Uh, we are an extremely favorable interest rate market when it comes to the bond market. Um, unfortunately, it's that favorable because all of us know what's happening in the stock market. Um, as the stock market continues to deteriorate, the interest rates in the bond market become better for the issuers, the cities. The interest rates get lower. Uh, if you look at what's been going on in terms of the uh, bond market, uh, this calendar year 2002, the last four or five weeks have been rather stable. They have also been at the lowest points that they have been in um, for the entire calendar year of 2002. And you can go back uh, probably all the way to maybe one point in 2001 when they were at, at this level. Um, so we are in a very, very attractive uh, market for borrowing. Um, there has been speculation throughout the year that by July of this year, we were going to see in, uh, the interest rates increasing. But there have been a number of factors that have been hitting the stock market. Um, that weren't anticipated back when those projections were made. So therefore, it has kept our interest rates um, not only stable, but even have been decreasing as a result of some of those problems in the stock market. Um, future projections at this time, I think, are very difficult to make. I don't see anything on the near horizon that would say the rates are going to be spiking upward. Um, uh, as, as long as it's going to take to uh, you know, make people comfortable with entering the uh, stock market, um, in the meantime, the bond market's going to stay relatively low from the investment side. Um, unfortunately, we also have been losing our ability to invest those monies at very high interest rates. Uh, that's the negative. Um, in the past, uh, if you borrowed money at 3%, you'd certainly hope that you could invest it at least 3%. And so um, that's the negative side of uh, the marketplace. Uh, but nonetheless, when it comes to borrowing money, I don't think we've ever be, been able to stand before you and have interest rates in uh, 3 percent um, on 10-year amortization. Uh, the taxable rate that we're looking at tonight, and it's getting difficult to see which rates are taxable and tax exempt. In the past, when we've looked at taxable rates, they've been 7, 8, 9 percent, and we certainly knew they were a taxable rate. Uh, nowadays, uh, you know, we look at interest rates and uh, you know, we're in the 4% range on 10-year um, amortization for, for taxable. So, um, you know, we indeed are uh, benefiting from what is going on in our bond market. Uh, as I said, the lowest point that it's been in, in 2002. Um, the 10-year rate on the taxable was a 4.28%. The 10-year rate on the tax exempt was a 3.03%. And the reason for that we had to have two separate issues is because, again, it's driven by what the money is used for in terms of what federal tax law allows you to borrow for at the different rates. So, um, you know, we did uh, take and have a very active sale this morning. Um, I don't know if you have the handouts available to you that have the bid tabulation form. Uh, we did have um, uh, six strong bids on the uh, tax exempt. Uh, the winning bid going to a place called UMB Bank in Kansas City. And again, that interest rate is a 3.03%. Uh, we did have uh, interest in um, seven different bids on the um, taxable. That winning bid was uh, Cronin and Company out of Minneapolis uh, for a net interest rate of a 4.28%. Um, again, uh, in the process, uh, before we go to market, we also go through uh, preparation of a document that we call the um, official statement. It's a prospectus on the city. 
Uh, we supply this information to all of the bidders. We supply this information along with your audits and budgets, your financials to Moody's Investor Service and Standard & Poor's. Uh, they independently review this in information and produce a credit report that confirms the city's credit rating. Uh, they both are what we call the double A credit rating standard. Uh, Moody's has uh, one, two, and three that follows it, so we're at a double A three with Moody's. Uh, we have a double A minus with Standard & Poor's. They use minuses and pluses, uh, so they're equal standing ratings. Uh, and again, uh, the credit reports uh, cite various reasons for those high quality ratings, uh, which uh, you know, your administration, your mayor, your, your finance director, your council has to be commended for sustaining those high grade ratings. Uh, there are a number of factors that are involved in those ratings. And one of the very strong factors that are within your control is your very strong and healthy financial position. Um, the factors that are out of your control are basically the economy. And everybody, you know how everybody's looking at what's going on in the economy right now. But to mitigate those concerns, they always come back and look at the strength of your financial position. And that is something that indeed is to your credit. So, um, uh, and also the fact that your debt is retired under what they consider a rapid retirement. A rapid retirement is required to sustain the high quality rating of the AA category. There is not a lot of municipalities out there that enjoy such a high credit rating. So indeed it's a, you know, a very exclusive club that you belong to. You've worked very hard to, to maintain those ratings and you are being rewarded for it each and every time you go enter the marketplace um, with the kind of interest rates that you're securing. So congratulations to you. Thank you. If to, are there any other questions? Okay. Thank you. Hey, Pat, would you call the roll, please? D. Bird? Here. No, no. You're voting. Aye. <laughs> e. Bird? Aye. Doyle? Aye. Manny? Aye. Moody? Aye. Perez? Aye. Horace? Aye. Schultz? Aye. Stephan? Aye. D. Van Acken? Aye. T. Van Acken? Aye. Vanderbilt? Aye. Gondolin? Aye. Warner? Aye. Wendinger? Aye. Solomon? Aye. 16 hours. Motion carried. <laughs> Okay, consent agenda. Alderman Van Akron. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that we accept and file our, all ROs, accept and adopt all committee reports, and pass all resolutions. And ordinance. Moved and second, accept and file all ROs, accept and adopt all RCs, pass to resolutions and ordinances, and that's from 13-1 through 13-30. Under discussion. Alderman Schultz. Thank you, Your Honor. In 1310, I'd like to ask for a separate vote on that. Okay. 1310 is a resolution authorizing the Economic Development Manager and or Director of City Development, along with the City Plan Commission, to investigate and recommend to the Council a suitable site for a new police station. Uh, this currently, and it has always been in the uh, Building and Use uh, Committee, I don't feel that's a role for the Building and Use Committee uh, to determine a, a site, a suitable site for a new police station. Uh, the Director of City v Development Office, uh, along with the Plan Commission, has the expertise and resources, and its role is more appropriate to do the evaluation and determine a proper site for a police station. Uh, the Plan Commission has one alderman on it, four citizen members with knowledge, experience, and expertise. Uh, we always talk about getting ci uh, citizen involvement and, and the uh, plan commission is an ideal uh, place for that. Uh, the mayor is chairman of that commission. Uh, the siting of the police station is an extremely important decision. Uh, you don't want to build a new police station and then five years down the road say, gee, that really is not the pr proper location for it. Um, I wish someone could explain to me why it makes more sense to have three aldermen make this decision more than the City of Development and the Plan Commission with all its resources and whose role is more appropriate 
to determine that. So I'm going to ask for a separate vote on that, and I am going to vote against filing it. Thank you. I think you're going to get your answer right now, Alderman uh, Schultz, Alderman Warner. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I would encourage everyone to support document uh, 1310 and a filing of it. And the reason I would do that is, first off, I don't believe this is a wor worthy resolution, and neither did the plan commission. As the recommendation of the staff was to file, and the vote to do so at the plan commission was unanimous. The Department of City Development is already involved in the process to secure a new police facility. City Development staff attends the Building Use Committee meetings and their expertise is appreciated. In reference to the Plan Commission, this commission does have a role as defined under state statute in section 62.23.5. That role is that prior to the final action by the Common Council on location and architectural design of any public building, the matter must be referred to the Plan Commission for its consideration and its report. And that said report then comes to the Common Council. I believe the Plan Commission and the Department of City Development are important in their opinions and expert advice is and will be taken into consideration as well as our compliance with state statutes. This resolution simply seeks to usurp the responsibility of one body, building use, and add another layer that would only delay and waste more taxpayer money. Both the Department of City Development and the Plan Commission already have a role, and there is no need to create another bureaucratic layer. It is my personal belief that this resolution is nothing more than a delaying tactic used in an attempt to derail the progress that has been made relative to a much needed new police station. And I would urge everyone to show your support for a new police station by allowing the committees and commissions involved to do their job. And when a final product is brought to this Common Council for consideration, you will be assured to have not only accurate, but legally compliant information. Thank you. Alderman Schultz. Thank you, Your Honor. I just got one comment on that. It's not creating another layer of, of uh, whatever Alderman Warner said. Uh, it's eliminating a layer. It's eliminating the, the Building Use Committee um, and their determination. It's going to go to the Planning Commission anyway. Uh, it should rightfully be there right now. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, want a separate vote on this? We don't need a roll call, do we? Don't need a roll call, but I think you might want one. Okay, roll call, please. Eberg, this is to file. Aye. Doyle? Aye. Manny? Aye. Moody? Aye. Perez? Aye. Ports? Aye. Schultz? No. Stephan? Aye. Dee Van Akron? Aye. T. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderwill? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Warner? Weininger, aye. Bauman, aye. D. Berg. Aye. 15 ayes, one no. Motion failed. Motion carried. Great. Motion failed. Okay, is there anything else on the consent agenda? If not, would you call the roll, Pat? Doyle? Aye. Manny? Aye. Moody? Aye. Perez? Aye. Ports? Aye. Schultz, Stephan, D. Van Akron, T. Van Akron, Vanderweel, Wangaman, Warner, Winninger, Bauman, D. Berg, E. Berg, 16 ayes. Motion carried. 1331 through 33 to be referred. 1334 will hold for 1219. 1335, by City Plan Commission, recommending filing documents relative to the placing a memorial to the Hmong war veterans in Deland Park and granting said request. Alderman Warner. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I make a motion to accept and file the report of officer and approve the placement of the Hmong memorial in Deland Park. Second. Moved and second to file. <laughs> Who said the second? <laughs> It's the most I've ever heard on a second. <laughs> okay. Alderman Warner, moving on. I uh, thank Your Honor. Under discussion, uh, this resolution. There's no resolution. On the wrong page. This. Excuse me. <laughs> Too many pages. Uh, first, thank you, Your Honor. Again, I, 
uh, I think it's about time. I fully support the location of this memorial along our lakefront. This is a site that has plenty of room, great access, great visibility. A memorial to the brave Hmong people that saved American lives during the Vietnam War. This is long overdue. We have kicked this thing up and down our streets, from park to park and everywhere else in the city. We need to move forward. I commend the Hmong Veterans Memorial Committee for the positive and constructive effort in bringing this to us. We have ample time to look at the final design of this project in the future. We have set aside numerous places throughout our city for memorials and historic records. We have the Lottie Cooper, the Phoenix site on North Point, numerous memorials in Fountain Park, a huge boulder in Esslingen Park, plaques, trees, and more. Last September 11th, the tree and plaque were dedicated in Fountain Park to honor and remember the heroes of that same day a year ago. At fire station number one, a flagpole and plaque were dedicated to honor the heroes of September 11, 2001. Both of these to bring closure, to preserve our history, and to remember as a nation of one, not two people. We as a people preserve our history, our memories, and our losses. And we do this for very good reason, so as not to forget. This is no different. The Hmong that live among us are no longer strangers no longer guests. They are a part of our community, our city, and our nation. I believe we should support their effort to remember their past so as not to forget that they are now part of us, our city, and our country. I believe this memorial belongs in the city of Sheboygan and that the lakefront is not only appropriate but an honorable location. And I urge each of you to support this. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Warner. Alderman Doyle. Thank you, Your Honor. This uh, certainly appears to be a noble cause, but it's also precedent setting and I'm opposed to it on four grounds. First, it's contrary to U.S. military tradition. Second, this type of proposal causes unnecessary division in, in our community or any community. Uh, third, there's not adequate public support for this memorial. Fourth, the public reaction to this memorial may not be what we expect. First, when U.S. veterans argued against a Hmong memorial, a Sheboygan Press editorial claimed that, quote, monuments to other groups are common in many American communities. That is not accurate. There are two important types of war memorials in the United States. The first type can be found at Fountain Park or at Kohler Memorial Drive. Both memorials recognize all veterans of a certain war. The second type of memorial is for heroic leaders. These memorials are found in U.S. cities, and the most common are of Washington, Grant, Sheridan, Lee, and Jackson. They are easily recognized as action figures on horseback and so on. The statue in Lafayette that's referred to uh, in the press was meant to honor Lafayette. During the American Revolution, our young country had a ragtag army of farmers that had to face a British army of professionals. Not only did Lafayette, Pulaski, von Steuben, and other foreigners train our soldiers, they were heroic leaders in battle. The Lafayette statue honors Lafayette for heroic leadership. These statues are not group monuments or memorials. Second, some of our council members feel that we should ignore U.S. military tradition and recognized the Hmong soldiers because they were our courageous allies in Vietnam. However, the U.S. has had this military tradition for 225 years for a reason. Our fathers knew that this is a country made up of diverse groups and it's essential that we create unity. Our forefathers knew that you, if you elevate one group above others for military honors, it leads to ill will in the community. This is what happened in Sheboygan. When U.S. veterans spoke out against this memorial because it ignored our traditions, the press responded with veiled charges of racism against the veterans and the Common Council. Threats were even made to move the memorial to Manitowoc because Sheboygan was such an embarrassment to the rest of the state. On the other side of the fence, nasty and unfair letters were written about the Hmongs, their veterans, and their role in the war. This type of division in the community would never have happened if we had observed tradition. Third, 
Does the Sheboygan citizenry support this memorial? It is a memorial, first of all, that won't be meaningful to U.S. veterans or to families that lost a son or daughter in the war. The rest of the community will have little interest in a memorial that only recognizes one group. Fourth, if the memorial is built, the public reaction to it may not be what you expect. Around this country, when a memorial, a monument, or an artwork is unveiled, the public often cries tasteless and abomination and so forth. Just look at the rotary on Indiana Avenue. Everything that was put there was criticized. Finally, the city gave up and planted it with decorative grasses, and the public even complained that they weren't mowing the place. Now, if you put together a million dollar beautiful waterfront with a memorial that doesn't have a lot of public support, that monument had better be magnificent because if it's the least bit tacky or self-serving, we will never hear the end of the complaining. To summarize, even though the monks are an important and valued group in our city, I don't believe we should ignore U.S. traditions and pick out one group and elevate them higher than others in military efforts simply because it doesn't work. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Doyle. Alderman Perez. Thank you, Your Honor. There is a, another issue at stake here, and that issue is one of diversity, and I'd like to share some thoughts with you and the, my fellow aldermen and public. The Hmong Memorial issue has been an extremely sensitive one for our community. It has brought out many kind words, and it has brought out many unkind words. I would like for the non-supporters of the memorial to know that I sincerely respect their viewpoint. Although I respect their viewpoint, I cannot agree with it. I ask that they respect mine. The face of America is changing. The face of Sheboygan is changing. It is a beautiful face. The heart of Sheboygan is changing. It is a loving heart. Sheboygan has redefined diversity. We have elevated our acceptance of diversity to great heights. We have expanded the role we each play in our community to include contributions from other ethnic groups. We have spoken and people have listened. We have learned to see, think, and act beyond color and cultural differences. Tonight, we will demonstrate that Sheboygan is a strong and united community. We will send a resounding message that everyone is encouraged to contribute, a little or a lot. And we will let everyone know, regardless of which ethnic group they belong to, that their contribution is most welcome in making our community the best there is. And we will prove to them that when they do, they will be properly recognized. The Hmong Memorial was approved last year by all committees only to be defeated by, the, by a subsequent common council vote. This year, and most recently, the Public Works Committee and the Planning Committee have unanimously voted to approve it. It would be disastrous for our community to experience a second defeat. The Hmong Memorial is long overdue. I humbly ask that each one of you find it in your heart and good conscience to vote in favor of it. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Press. Alderman Winninger. Yes, Your Honor, I would like to abstain. Feedback of my constituents was very mixed. Uh, strong emotions were on both sides. And I personally am not convinced uh, either way. So I would like to abstain from voting. Thank you. Alderman Schultz. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Bu Yang is my neighbor, so it's across the street from me. Uh, he called me on the phone a couple of times, and I told him to when, when we talked, I can support the memorial now. I think the, the, the thing that, that made me uh, change my opinion on it, they've taken the military aspect out of it. It's not a military display anymore. To me, I, I had somewhat of a problem with that. Uh, you know, I recognize among people, uh, the proposed memorial now is going to be more people-oriented, it's going to be educational, it's going to uh, reflect their culture. Uh, I, I think that has some meaning in itself. I think we need to get away from the military part of it as much as we can. 
Uh, there's, there's a lot of issues about the, the military and other wars and groups that supported <laughs> us in other battles, other wars and so forth. So I, I, I think this memorial is going to have a lot more meaning to it. It's going to be more acceptable to people and I think it is appropriate. Thank you. Another discussion? Pat, would you call the roll, please? Oh, excuse me. Alderman D. Van Aken. Yeah, I have one, two questions. In the old one, we had that they could not start to put a memorial up and said a certain amount of money was set aside. Correct. Is that in this one? Correct, I believe so. Correct? Correct. Also, the care of it, there was a certain amount put in. Is that also put in there? That's still there. Correct. Thank you. Okay. Call the roll. Manny? Aye. Moody? Aye. Perez? Aye. Ports? Aye. Schultz? Aye. Stephan? Aye. D. Van Akron? Aye. T. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Longaman? No. Warner? Aye. Wenninger? Upstate. Bauman? Aye. D. Berg? Aye. E. Berg? Aye. Doyle? No. 13 ayes, 2 noes, 1 abstention. Motion carried. Congratulations. Okay, 1336 we'll hold for 1354. 1337 we hold for 1353. 1338 through 50 to be referred. 1353, along with 1337 by Alderman Warner, authorizing sale of two parcels of city land in Cold Spring subdivision to VFW post 9156. Alderman no, Warner. No, delay over. Oh, what's up? Delay over. Oh, I'm sorry. Delay over. Excuse me. Delay over, both of them? Yeah, delay over. Good. Sorry. That's right. Also, I'm say one <laughs> no, that's fine. 13. 53 through 55 lie over. My mistake. I have to back up once also on that last. No, this will be in the. You gonna? Matters. This okay. is what it matters. Okay. To file that. That'll be way up end. Okay. I didn't know if you want to do with the last document or not. We can do it at the end. Okay. 1356 through 59 to be referred. 1360 lies over, 1361 and 62 to be referred, Alderman Wangaman. Uh, reference uh, 1363, I'd like to ask for suspension of the rules. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm, I didn't get there yet, but that's why. <laughs> 1363 by Alderman Wangaman, amending the municipal code relating to appoint appointment of additional members to the library board. Okay, Alderman Wangaman. I'd like to ask for suspension on that. Uh, this party has already been appointed by the county board and she's waiting to take her seat and by uh, suspending the rules and approving it now, uh, we can uh, speed up that process because uh, it would be well to have her on the board. Let's move to second for suspension. Is there any objections to suspension? Hearing none, Alderman Wangaman. I make a motion then that the uh, resolution be put upon its passage. Move to second. A resolution be put ordinance. up. Ordinance, excuse me, be put up on this passage. Ordinance. Under discussion, Alderman Perez. That's okay. I'll, okay. I'll pass. Hearing none. All in favor? No. No. no? You got to roll that one. Yep. Okay. Moody. Aye. Perez. No. Ports. Aye. Schultz. Aye. Stephan. Aye. D. Van Akron. Aye. T. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Wangaman. Aye. Warner, Aye. Weininger, Aye. Bauman, Aye. D. Berg, Aye. E. Berg, Aye. Doyle, Aye. Manny. Aye. 15 ayes, 1 no. Motion carried. Okay. 1364 will lie over. Under other matter, matters laid over. 1121, a RO by City Plan Commission recommending amending the City Floodplain Zoning Ordinance to reflect the new requirements as presented by the Federal Emergency Management Agency. Alderman Warner. Uh, thank you, uh, Your Honor. I make a motion to accept and file the RO. 
Could you take the second, next one to 1141? The next one, 1141, which is the general ordinance. I uh, make a motion the ordinance be put upon its passage. Moved and second, accept the filed RO and pass the general mm -hmm. ordinance on 1121, 1141. Under discussion. Okay, now would you call the roll, please? Perez? Aye. Ports? Aye. Schultz? Aye. Stephan? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. T. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Warner? Weininger, Bauman, D. Berg, E. Berg, Doyle, Aye. Manny, Aye. Moody, Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carried. 1218, RO by City Plan Commission recommending establishing the use district classification of annex property located north of Mayflower Avenue and east of North 15th Street. Alderman Warner. Uh, thank you, Honor. Does 1334 go with this one? That goes with 1219, the next one. 1219. Nope, next but he can one. Do okay. You can do them if you like. If I can take them, take them all at once, I would. That okay. would be nice. On 1218, I would make a motion to accept and file the report of officer and pass the attached ordinance. On 1334, I would make a motion to accept and file. And on 1219, I would uh, make a motion to accept and file the report of officer and pass the attached ordinance. Second. Moved in second on 1218 and 1219 to accept and file the rows and pass the general ordinances also with 1334 under discussion. Hearing none, would you call the roll? Ports, Aye. Schultz, Aye. Stephan, D. Van Akron, Aye. T. Van Akron, Vanderweel, Wangeman, Warner, Weininger, Bauman, D. Berg, Aye. E. Berg, Aye. Doyle, Aye. Manny, Aye. Moody, Aye. Perez. 16 eyes. Motion carried. 1233, a resolution by Alderman Van Akron, Schultz, Ports, and Doyle transferring funds to provide monies to establish appropriation for cable TV equipment. Alderman Van Akron. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Okay. Moved in a sec. You can take 1234 if he wants with it. Would you like to take 34 with it? Should I take 32 too? Well, it's not yours, but if you want to, sure. it doesn't make any difference. 1232 resolution from uh, Warner, Doyle, Winninger, and uh, Van Willey authorizing police department to accept the local law enforcement block grant. And resolution 1230, that was 1232, excuse me, 1234 resolution 131 by Alderman Van Akron, Schultz, Perez, and Doyles, and Stefan transferring funds to provide monies for established estimated revenues and appropriations donations from the Optimus Evening club for playground equipment. I would move that all three resolutions be put upon their passage. Move to second that the three resolutions be put upon their passage under discussion. Hearing none, would you call the roll please? Schultz. Aye. Stephan. Aye. Van Akron. Aye. T. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Wangeman. Aye. Warner. Aye. Weininger. Aye. Bauman. Aye. D. Berg. Aye. E. Berg. Aye. Doyle. Aye. Manny. Aye. Moody. Aye. Perez. Aye. Ports. 16 eyes. Motion carried. 1365 will go to finance. 1366 to finance. 67 will go to plan. 68 will go to city plan. 69 will go to public protection and safety. 1370 public protection and safety. 1371 risk management. 1372 will lie over. And that's the uh, authorizing purchase of four transit buses. That lies over. Uh, 1373 goes to city plan, 74 goes to public works, 75 will go to city plan, 76 will go to public works, 77 city plan, 1378 will go to city plan commission. Steve? 1379 is a relative to placement of the proposed Mung Memorial. And that could be accepted in file, I believe. So moved. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Who did the second? I'm sorry. Okay. 1380 is a communication from Jay Zhang uh, requesting a change to the winter parking ordinance. And that will go to public protection and safety. Alderman Van Akron. Your Honor, I would move to convene in closed session under the provisions of section 1918. 5-1-E of the Wisconsin Statutes for the purpose of delivering regarding the Harbor Center Marina operator proposals and deliberating concerning negotiations for an ambulance contract where competitive and bargaining reasons require closed session, not to exceed 10 minutes. 
Moved and second to go in closed session under discussion. Hearing none, would you call the roll, Pat? Stephen? Aye. Dee Van Akron? Aye. T. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Wenninger? Aye. Bauman? Aye. D. Berg? Aye. E. Berg? Aye. Doyle? Aye. Manny? Aye. Moody? Aye. Perez? Aye. Ports? Aye. Schultz? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carried. In three minutes, we'll let the media clear, and then 8 o'clock, we'll be back. Thank mm -hmm. you.